Hey everyone, how are you? I hope you're well. Now, let's talk about editing, specifically on an iPad. So when it comes to editing on a PC, it's not so bad. You've got lots of things like you've got Photoshop, you've got Lightroom, obviously, that go together. You've got uh, Affinity Photo, which I, I quite like as an alternative to Photoshop, and Luminar, specifically for me, Luminar 4 is what I've been using to edit my photos when I've been doing complex edits. But I like my iPad. I love it for video editing, and I want to use it more for photo editing. Now, I can use Snapseed, and I can use those sort of photo editors, but I'm always on the lookout for something a little bit more comprehensive, or at least something that that just produces something a little bit more, a little bit less social media, a little bit more final result. One app that I've found that I quite like is called Pixelmator Pro. Now I just want to preface this saying I'm not sponsored by this at all. This is just me passing on information about what I use that some of you may find helpful. So with Pixelmator Pro, I really like it for a couple of reasons. The fact that I can either look at my photo library or my online file system. In my case, I use Dropbox. I can see all of my photo raw files, the actual images, sometimes they take a bit of time to load, to be fair. I can download those to my app to edit, but it also syncs with the cloud storage. So there's no worry that it's not backed up or anything. But what I really like about it is how it feels. So for me, developing photos has a lot of emotion to it. I know that sounds maybe a bit soppy, but let me explain. So when I started editing photos, it was all film. It was all photography, dark rooms, black and white, that sort of thing. And so there's a certain feeling to editing a photo that's less clinical and more about exposure in the editing process and things like that than it is about making things as crispy as possible and, and removing grain and all that sort of thing. I, I want a bit more emotion to it. I, I want it to be a simple process. I don't want to be pixel peeping my own photos for hours on end just trying to get that one photo to look kind of good. So what I like about this is that you've got all of your tools on the side. So when you're in there, when you've opened up a photo, you've got a few options at the top right. And I just want to take you through my process of, of what I actually go through to to edit a photo. So I always start off with a crop. If I'm not happy with the crop, it's always the crop first because I don't want to be editing based on light in a photo that's not going to be in the frame. So I'll always take a very natural approach. I usually just drag the corners. I don't muck about with, you know, all the other stuff like um, I, if I'm posting social media or the like, I'll choose 4x5 or 5x7 or something like that. But generally speaking, I just hit none and I just drag the corners to fit how I think it looks best. So I've got my crop, I move the photo around till I'm happy with where the subject sits. From there, tap it again, I go to my sliders. Straight away on my sliders, I go through and the first thing I do is I play with the exposure a little bit, just to go all the way up, all the way down, just to see where the light and the highlights blow out, that sort of thing. Sometimes it's useful if you've got saved presets down the bottom, which Pixelmator does come with a bunch. And some of them are pretty good, to be honest. Like you just single tap and you're already halfway there. I have a few that I've loaded on here myself that I've adjusted and saved to do with the different film types. Uh, one I quite like is the Morning Mist preset that I've used in the past, which is a little bit dark, but it does have some quite big highlights. And then from there I'll expose based on this. Um, but, you know, I'll take down the height. Usually it's the exposure. I'll adjust the exposure so my highlights aren't blown out unless that's what I'm looking for. I'll adjust my highlights as well to also help balance it out. Shadows, I might bring them up a bit or I might bring them down, it just depends on the photo. Brightness, brightness is a big thing I think because I think it gets overlooked in terms of an overall look if you want a darker, moodier look or not. You know, if you've already gone taking your highlights all the way down, um, sometimes bringing up the light without affecting the highlights is important. Black point is something that I like in an editor. There are several editors out there that have no black point editing and I don't like that because I like to have controls on my blacks because that's where I think you get the most out of your shadows, more than the shadow uh, side of things. So adjusting the black point brings in, I think, the kind of contrast I like. Quite often I'll go low on the contrast and higher on the black point. Hues and colours, if there's any colours that I want to bring out or mute, uh, that's a good way to do it. Sometimes you'll just go in here and just brighten up your yellows or, you know, put in a bit of saturation if it needs it, uh, adjusting your colors. The color balance wheel, I don't really play with this much, but I like that it's there if I do need it to, to mess with, because you can sure 
really change the look of a photo with this and then I like that you can then go ahead and change your contrast and uh, you know even your amount of saturation through that wheel. The actual curves, the actual curves I use quite a bit for just very basic curves adjustments. When it comes to like replace color I've not even used that. Fade, I've never really used fade although I do quite like using fade on Luminar 4 so I might try that on here sometime. Sharpen as well, the sharpen tool on here is pretty good. And then grain, I do quite like that you can actually add grain because I do like a bit of grain in a photo. And you can also adjust, if you are using one of the filters at the bottom, down the bottom here you've got a, an adjustment where you can take it all the way off or add it in to the level because usually when you're adding any kind of LUT, any kind of preset adjustment, being able to reduce it a little bit so you've got a little bit of that look but not the whole look can really benefit a photo. Now the real trick to this app, after you've made all of your adjustments, the super resolution. So what this does is it takes a look using AI at every pixel in your screen and it basically ups the resolution of those pixels, duplicates them, reprints them, whatever. It, I don't know what it does, it's magic to be honest. But it will bump up the resolution of the image off a raw file too. So it's really good, like it means you can make the picture a bit bigger. So I've printed off the back of this by saving that file and then exporting it as a JPEG and then printing it at full size, full resolution, and it's worked pretty well. But I like how simple this app is, more than anything. No app has everything. There's no doubt that when it comes to comprehensive editing of photos on an iPad, the best app really is Lightroom. I'm yet to find an app that's that good or at least that comprehensive. But I really like Pixelmator Pro because it's simple, it's easy sliders, it uses a lot of AI similar to the way you, Luminar 4 does to help adjust your photos and then boosting that resolution can you know make a bit of a difference, especially if you're cropping in quite a bit into an image. Being able to extrapolate that resolution out using AI is pretty cool. I have printed some of those photos off the back of that app, but mostly I use it still again for online posting and things like that. Sometimes I use it just for working out how a photo is going to look before I actually play with it in Luminar to try to get a and try to replicate the look in there. Um, and but it's a really fun app to use, and it's not that expensive if you go for the paid pro version, which you, you really have to do. So far, it's the app that I've gelled with the most on, on my iPad. And I just wanted to share that information with you guys so that if you're looking for a solution on iPad, it might be the right solution for you. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got photo editing apps you think I should check out that do everything that you could possibly want them to do as a photo editing app on an iPad, let me know in the comments below because this is just from what I could find out and it's difficult to find new apps. And so, again, I implore you, help me out, let me know what you use, and maybe there's a better app out there. But for now, Pixelmate is what I use on my iOS device. I hope you found that useful, or interesting, or something. And in the meantime, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.